Hi, fourth grade, Mrs. McClure here. We're going to keep reading Tales of a Fourth Grade Nothing, starting on page 17. And we know that the Yarbies are over the Hatcher's house for dinner, and they just put Fudge to bed, so let's see if Fudge stays in bed or if something happens. All right, boys and girls, here we go. He stayed away until we were in the middle of our roast beef. Then he came in carrying Dribble's bowl. He walked right up to Mrs. Yarby. He thought she was his new friend. See, he said, holding Dribble under her nose. See, Dribble? Mrs. Yarby shrieked. Oh, I can't stand reptiles. Get that thing away from me. Fudge looked disappointed, so he showed Dribble to Mr. Yarby. See, he said. Hatcha, Mr. Yarby boomed. Make him get that thing out of here. I wonder why Mr. Yarby called my father Hatcher. Didn't he know his first name was Warren? And I didn't like the way Mr. and Mrs. Yarby both called Dribble a thing. I jumped up. Give him to me, I told Fudge. I took Dribble and his bowl and marched into my room. I inspected my turtle all over. He seemed all right. I didn't want to make a big scene in front of our company, but I was mad. I mean, really mad. That kid knows he's not allowed to touch my turtle. Peter, my father called, come and finish your dinner. When I got back to the table, I heard Mrs. Yarby say, it must be interesting to have children. We never had any ourselves. But if we did, Mr. Yarby told my dad, we'd teach them some manners. I'm a firm believer in old fashioned good manners. So are we, Howard, my dad said in a weak voice. I thought Mr. Yarby had a lot of nerve to hint that we had no manners. Didn't I pretend to like their dumb old picture dictionary? If that isn't good manners, then I don't know what is. My mom excused herself and carried Fudge back to my room. I guess she put him into his crib again. I hope she told him to keep his hands off my face. We didn't hear from him again until dessert. Just as my mom was pouring the coffee, he ran in wearing my rubber gorilla mask from last Halloween. It's a very real looking mask. I guess that's why Mrs. Yorby screamed so loud. If she hadn't made so much noise, my mom probably wouldn't have spilled the coffee all over the floor. My father grabbed Fudge and pulled off the gorilla mask. That's not funny, Fudge, he said. Funny, Fudge laughed. Funny, 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 Fudgy. Yes, sir, Hatcher, Mr. Yarby said, old-fashioned manners. By that time, I'm sure my father was sorry the Yarbys weren't staying at a hotel. I finally got to bed at 10. Fudge was in his crib slurping away. I thought I'd never fall asleep, but I guess I did. I woke up once, once when Fudge started babbling. He said, boo ba 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 whatever that means. I didn't even get scared. I whispered, shut up, and he did. Early the next morning, I felt something funny on my arm. At first, I didn't wake up. I just felt this little tickle. I thought it was part of my dream, but then I had the feeling someone was staring at me, so I opened my eyes. Fudge was standing over me, and Dribble was crawling around on my arm. I guess Fudge could tell I was about ready to kill him because he bent down and kissed me. That's what he does when my mother's angry at him. He thinks nobody can resist him when he makes himself so lovable. And a lot of times it works with my mother, but not with me. I jumped up, put Dribble back in his bowl, and smacked Fudge on his backside. Hard. He hollered. My father came running into my room. He was still in his pajamas. He whispered, what's going on in here? I pointed at Fudge and he pointed at me. My father picked up my brother and carried him off. Go back to sleep, Peter, he said. It's only six in the morning. I fell asleep for another hour, then woke up to an awful noise. It was Fudge playing with his new train. It woke up everybody, including the Yarbies. But this time there was nobody they could blame. They were the ones who gave Fudge the train in the first place. Breakfast was a very quiet affair. Nobody had much to say. Mr. Yarby drank two glasses of Juicio. Then he told my dad that he and Mrs. Yarby had their suitcase packed. They were leaving for a hotel as soon as breakfast was over. 
My father said he understood that the apartment was too small for so many people. My mother didn't say anything. When Mr. Darby went into Fudge's bedroom to pick up his suitcase, his voice boomed. Hatcher! My father ran toward the bedroom. My mother and Mrs. Yarby followed him. I followed them. When we got there, we saw Fudge sitting on the Yarby suitcase. He had decorated it with about 100 green stamps, the kind my mother gets at the supermarket. See, Fudge said, see, pretty, he laughed. Nobody else did. Then he licked the last green stamp and stuck it right in the middle of the suitcase. All gone, Bud sang, holding up his hands. It took my mother half an hour to peel off her trading stamps and clean up the Yarby suitcase. The next week, my father came home from the office and collected all the cans of Juicio in our house. He dumped them into the garbage. My, felt, my mother felt bad that my dad had lost such an important account, but my father told her not to worry. Juicio wasn't selling very well at the stores. Nobody seemed to like the combination of oranges, grapefruits, pineapples, pears, and bananas. You know, Dad, I said, I only drank Juicio to be polite. I really hated it. You know something funny, Peter? My dad said, I thought it was pretty bad myself. Chapter 3, The Family Dog Nobody ever came right out and said that Fudge was the reason my father lost the Juicio account, but I thought about it. My father said he was glad to be rid of Mr. Yarby. Now he could spend more time on his other clients, like the Toddle Bike Company. My father is in charge of their new TV commercial. I thought maybe he could use me in it since I know how to stand on my head. But he said he wasn't planning on having any headstanders in the commercial. My grandma taught me to stand on my head when I spent the night at her house. I could stay up for as long as three minutes. I showed my mom, my father, and Fudge how I can do it right in the living room. They were all impressed, especially Fudge. He wanted to do it too, so I turned him upside down and tried to teach him, but he always tumbled over backwards. Right after I learned to stand on my head, Fudge stopped eating. He did it suddenly. One day he ate fine, and the next day nothing. No, eat, he told my mother. She didn't pay too much attention to him until the third day. When he still refused to eat, she got upset. You've got to eat, Fudgy, she said. You want to grow up to be big and strong, don't you? No, grow, Fudge said. That night, my mom told my father how worried she was about Fudge. So my father did tricks for him while my mother stood over his chair trying to get some food in his mouth. But nothing worked, not even juggling oranges. Finally, my mother got the brilliant idea of me standing on my head while she fed Fudge. I wasn't very excited excited about standing on my head in the kitchen. The floor is awfully hard in there, but my mother begged me. She said, it's very important for Fudge to eat. Please help us, Peter. So I stood on my head. When Fudge saw me upside down, he clapped his hands and laughed. When he laughs, he opens his mouth. That's when my mother stuffed some baked potato into it. But the next morning, I put my foot down. No! I don't want to stand on my head in the kitchen or anywhere else, I added. And if I don't hurry, I'll be late for school. Don't you care if your brother starves? No, I told her. Peter, what an awful thing to say. Oh, he'll eat when he gets hungry. Why don't you just leave him alone? That afternoon when I came home from school, I found my brother on the kitchen floor playing with bowl boxes of cereals and raisins and dried apricots. My mom was begging him to eat. No, 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 Fudge shouted. He made a terrible mess, dumping everything on the floor. Please stand on your head, Peter, my mom said. It's the only way he'll eat. No, I told her. I'm not going to stand on my head anymore. Then I went into my room and slammed the door. I played with Dribble until supper time. Nobody ever worries about me the way they worry about Fudge. If I decided not to eat, they'd probably never even notice. That night during dinner, Fudge hid under the kitchen table. He said, I'm a doggy, woof, woof, woof. It was hard to eat with him under the table, pulling on my legs. I waited for my father to say something, but he didn't. Finally, my mother jumped up. I know, she said, if Fudge is a doggy, he wants to eat on the floor, right? If you ask me, Fudge never even thought about that. 
but he liked the idea a lot. He barked and nodded his head. So my mother fixed his plate and put it under the table. Then she reached down and petted him like he was a real dog. My father said, aren't we carrying this a little too far? My mother didn't answer. All right, boys and girls, we're going to stop there for now. Stay tuned for tomorrow for more of Tales of a Fourth Grade Nothing.